was the Ark of the Covenant a mini nuclear reactor? We're going to dive into this in this video. If you like this type of thing, be sure to subscribe. Feel free to comment, share your thoughts, all this kind of stuff. But we're going to start in the book of Numbers. And we're going to go to verse 9, chapter 15. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And at even, there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until the morning. So was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that, the children of Israel journeyed. So it's kind of interesting that Moses describes one area over the tabernacle where the ark was as appearing to be like fire. It wasn't fire, wasn't on fire. There wasn't any smoke, but it appeared, I would say if they had a word for glowing, that would be the word that you would use today, glowing. It appeared like fire. Because again, we have to understand they're writing what they're actually witnessing. So it looked like fire. I think it was glowing. I think when they built the ark, when they designed the ark, it was almost like a mini nuclear reactor. So I'm going to try and draw the ark, for example. This is going to be hard, but let's just say, for example, we have, whoa, here is an angel. Not a very good artist, but let's just say we have here, what do we have here? Angel on his knees here, whoa. Wow, that doesn't even look like an angel, but what's interesting is, this is actually supposed to be one piece. This is not the angels melded onto this piece of gold. This is this lid was was um, hammered out as one piece. The mercy seat, uh, the cherubims, everything. This is all one piece, and then below that is actually the ark of the covenant itself which is interesting. Then inside the Ark of the Covenant are the Ten Commandments, the jar, of Hannah, uh, the jar of Manna, and then also we have Aaron's Rod, which has a leaf on it, a bud. Those are the three components. And I think when you have these three components, plus this device here, you have the staves, that were said to stay inside the Ark of the Covenant. I should have drew this black, I guess, but that's okay. So you have the golden staves right here. These are gold overlaid. These are made out of shittim wood overlaid in gold. Then you have the Ten Commandments. You have the bread of manna, and then you have Aaron's rod. I think when you have these all these components here, you have a mini nuclear reactor. This thing is like a time bomb. The reason why Solomon was able to place this ark inside his newly built temple was they did something. I'm just going to draw this again here. They did something to... The staves, for some reason, this is kind of interesting. Let's just draw this here again here. So this is the Ark of the Covenant. This is the mercy seat, all the stuff. But let's just say, for example, you have the rings here, right here. And then you have the golden staves. So let's just draw this right here. For some reason, Solomon removed these. He removed the staves out of the cup out of the ark. And it said, I believe in Deuteronomy somewhere, that you're not supposed to remove them. It's for the priest to bear the load, 
whenever they were transporting the ark. For some reason, Solomon took them out. And it also says, whoever was writing the story of Solomon said that the only thing that was in the ark was the Ten Commandments. There was no manna. There was no Aaron's rod. And I think if you have these components in here, this helps, including the staves, this helps activate the Ark of the Covenant. This is why the temple was able to be destroyed because I believe that the Ark wasn't powered up. It was missing a couple of key components. Didn't have the staves. Maybe that was an on-off switch. I don't know. Um, they didn't have... The jar of manna didn't have rods, uh, Aaron's rod. So if you don't have those components, uh, the Ark of the Covenant is inefficient. It's not going to wipe out armies like it did when David, when the Philistines captured the Ark and brought it to their city, they began to have tumors. Why? Because I think it was some type of radiation poisoning. Radiation was happening all over their bodies, and they decided to send the ark back in a cart and send it away from their city because they were dying left, right, and center. They were getting sick because of this ark, and I think it was because of some form of radiation. When King David tried to bring the ark to Jerusalem, the ark was on a cart and what had happened is one of his men saw that the ark was falling over when one of the oxen stumbled and he went to, and put his hand on the ark. He got fried. He got instantly electrocuted, dead as a doornail. In fact, King David was mad. So he left the Ark of the Covenant alone. He didn't bring it into Jerusalem. I think that thing was charged up, ready to go. And the design of the Israelite, what do you call it? Their priestly garments. I think that was some kind of a barrier to protect themselves from the ark as they were ministering inside the tabernacle. Because if you recall, let me see if I can draw the tabernacle a little bit. I know this sounds a little bit science fiction-y, but it's very interesting. So you have, well, I bump my keyboard here. One second, one second. Let's draw this again here. You have this here. And you have, this is the tabernacle, and then you have the holy place, and then you have what's called the holy of holies, and this is where the ark was, the ark of the covenant. And the top, I know this is a different angle, but let's just do it this way here. Let's go this way. Uh, maybe this will help. This is the tabernacle. Oh, that's not right. I wish I could draw. I really do wish I could draw. So you have the tabernacle here, something like this. And you have the Holy of Holies. I believe, and then right here, here's the Holy of Holies. This is the holy place. And then this here is all badger skin. Badgers. Badgers. Badger skin on the top, facing upward. And then below, underneath, from this angle, this is all ram skin, which is kind of interesting in itself. So you got ram skin. It's interesting that it's not both badger skin inside and out. It's just badger skin on top, ram skin underneath. And then these are all the curtains. All these fastened all together and all this kind of stuff. These are curtains all the way around. Protection. Why is it designed this way with gold gold rings, all this kind of stuff. I believe that this is some type of a shield, the tabernacle to protect the priests. Because why do you think they had a rope attached to them in case they got too close to the ark, they did something wrong, 
they would get fried and then they'd have to pull them out because they couldn't they couldn't go inside the holy of holies outside of that one year when the high priest would go in once a year and if he died they'd have to pull him out when the bells stopped ringing that was a sure sign that the person was dead and they'd have to pull him out this looks like this whole operation looks like it's like a mini nuclear reactor they have to be so careful they can't just go into the holy place without their garments if a person didn't have the garments on and they touched the ark they were fried interesting right then if you look at let's just say for example jericho when the israelites were crossing the jordan you had the priests let's just draw a little mini you have the ark of the covenant and let me draw it this way let me draw it this way here. You have the Ark of the Covenant. And you have the staves. And then you have the priests. Well, that's not a very good drawing of priests, but just pretend these are the priests right here. And they're in the water, they're in the Jordan. And over here is the Israelite army. I'm just say Israel. Uh Oh, Israelite, Israelite army, army. They are about 3,000 feet away, not three feet. Three thousand feet away from these guys as they're crossing over the Jordan to get to the other side. It also says that they cross very fast. I think as they went by the Ark of the Covenant, they're like, man, I don't want to get any radiation poisoning. So they were booting it across. And as soon as everyone got across, then the priests, and there were seven of them, seven priests. Um, oh, no, not this time. I don't think this time. If they were, they were just ahead of the Levites that were actually carrying the ark, but there were seven priests with trumpets, I believe, ahead of them. At least when they got to Jericho, there were seven pre priests ahead of the ark, which was ahead of the army. But it's interesting that the army was 3,000 feet behind the ark. I would have thought the closer to the ark you got, the more protection you can offer the ark. Clearly not. So that's kind of interesting. And obviously they circled around the walls of Jericho a bunch of times and the walls fell down flat and then they invaded Jericho, which is kind of interesting in itself. So I think that the Ark, the reason why the Ark isn't around today, probably a couple of reasons, but one of them is the Ark is so powerful. If you were to go by the schematics, and again, we'll probably never know exactly what the schematics were because we don't even know what a cubit length is. We can guess how long it is, but is it a child? Is it a full-grown man? Is it a guy that's like seven feet tall? Is it an angel? What are the cubits? And then also, we don't know the proper color of the dyes. We know they're purple, but we don't know what kind of dye because they may not be in existence today. So even if you were to design an ark, you may not get the priestly robes right. And if you don't get the priestly robes right, you're going to start frying them unintentionally because maybe you get the ark right, but you don't get the robes right. Maybe you get the robes right, but you don't get the ark right and you blow everybody up. I think it's very dangerous to be messing around with the ark trying to redesign it. So the next best thing would be either to find the original ark which i don't know why anybody would want to find the ark i think it's much too dangerous to be messing with the ark or the other thing would be is to maybe it actually disappeared maybe it actually went up to heaven i don't know i think it could be hidden somewhere for our own protection is it under the dome of the rock 
you know, sometimes when you look at the Dome of the Rock, you look at it, it feels like the way it's designed, it's actually protecting something. It's not just your typical building. And why is the Israeli army protecting the Dome of the Rock? People say, well, it's because people could vandalize it and all this kind of stuff. I think there's probably more to it that's underneath that rock. We don't know. They say it's uh, an altar by Abraham, the altar that Abraham used to sacrifice Isaac on it. I don't know. It's hard to say. Maybe the ark is right there. Maybe it's being protected. Who knows? But I think that was one of the reasons why Solomon was able to have the ark in his temple as he took out the power of the ark, took out the, the manna, took out Aaron's rod, took out the staves. And the only thing that was in the ark was the Ten Commandments. There's my thoughts my theory. Let me know what you think. Feel free to comment as always, and I will see you in another video. Bye for now.